We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Jehovah Almighty. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Jehovah Almighty. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Jehovah Almighty. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Jehovah Almighty. We praise you, Lord. We praise you. We praise you, Jehovah Almighty. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Jehovah Almighty. Father Almighty, we bless you. And we want you to know that we love you. We are proud of you because there is no God like you. All power in heaven and on earth belong to you. We worship you, Lord. We ask that you please accept our worship in Jesus' name. Lord God Almighty, as we continue with our study of your word today, we pray that the power in your word will bring healings and deliverance Miracles, signs, and wonders to all your children all over the world. And after you've done it, take all the glory, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, we wave to one or two people and say, God bless you in Jesus' name. Uh, we continue with our series on going higher. And now we are in part 22. And we will take our text from First King chapter 18. We would begin to read it from verse 17, but this time we will go all the way to verse 20 first kings 18 from verse 17 to 20 and it came to pass when ahab saw elijah that ahab said unto him art thou he that troubled israel and he answered i have not troubled israel but thou and thy father's house in that ye are forsaken the commandments of the lord and thou hast followed Bealim. Now therefore send and gather to me all Israel unto Mount Carmel, and the prophets of Baal four hundred and fifty, and the prophets of the groves four hundred, which eat at Jezebel's table. So Ahab sent unto all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. Today we want to look at something very interesting and <clears throat> in case you want to give it a subtitle, you want to call it Commanding the Commander. This is a very interesting part of the story. We have the prophet commanding the king. So the first question you want to ask is, who is greater, the king or the prophet? Because according to Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 4, Ecclesiastes 8 verse 4, the Bible says, where the word of the king is, there is power. And who can say unto him, What doest thou? The king is powerful. 
However, in 1 Samuel chapter 15, if you read from verse 26 to 29, 1 Samuel 15 from verse 26 to 29, we discover that a king lost his crown for mishandling the dress of a prophet. Uh, power passes power. I mean, Saul said to Samuel, please come and worship with me. Samuel said, no, I'm not going to worship with you because God has forsaken you. So he turned to go. And Samuel grabbed the dress of prophet Samuel. And the dress tore. <laughs> and the prophet turned around to the king and said, You tore my dress? He said, Your kingdom is gone. Who is greater? The king or the prophet? What should be your greatest desire? To be a minister of God or to be a minister in the government? Which is more? Which is better? Of course, you can be both. But of course, you know very well when you are a minister of the government, you are likely to cease to be a minister when the tenure of the government is over. But when you are a minister of God, since the tenure of the kingdom of God is forever, then you remain a minister forever. One of the things you will thoroughly discover, take note of the word thoroughly, <clears throat> as you grow higher in the Lord, is who you really are in Christ. When you begin to grow higher, in the Lord, you will get to a stage that according to Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 20, Second Corinthians 5 verse 20, you will become an ambassador of Christ, an ambassador of the King of Kings. That's not for baby Christians, it's for disciples. You must have grown, you must have reached a certain height in the Lord before you can be called an ambassador of Christ. You know who an ambassador is? An ambassador is a representative of his country. In Matthew chapter 10 verse 40, Matthew 10 verse 40, Jesus Christ said to the disciples, the ambassadors, his ambassadors, he said, whosoever receives you receives me, and whoever receives me receives him that has sent me. When you reach the level of being an ambassador of Christ, you have the backing of the Lord Jesus Christ and the backing of God Almighty himself. Because you are now representing the Most High. Daniel chapter 4 verse 25. Daniel 4 25 tells us that the Most High rules in the affairs of men. You become an ambassador of the real ruler himself. 
You become the ambassador of the one who, according to Ecclesiastes 5 verse 8, Ecclesiastes 5 verse 8, the one who is higher than the highest. Proverbs chapter 21 verse 1, Proverbs 21 verse 1 says, The heart of kings are like a river in the hand of the Almighty God, and he can turn it whichever way he wants. You become a representative of the one who lives forever. Deuteronomy 32 verse 40. Deuteronomy 32 verse 40. The almighty God says, I lift my hands to the heaven and I say, I live forever. Whereas a king can even be eaten up by worms. That's how feeble a king can be. Acts chapter 12, from verse 20 to 24. Acts 12, from verse 20 to 24. So which is better? To be just a king in this world or to be an ambassador of the king of kings himself? You're on your way to the top when you begin to command with confidence the devil himself. In James chapter 4 verse 7, James 4 verse 7, the Bible says, If you submit yourself unto God, you will resist the devil. And he will flee from you. You are on your way to the top. When with confidence you begin to command demons. And they obey you. Mark chapter 16 verse 17. Mark 16 verse 17. Jesus Christ said, in my name, you will cast out demons. That's not for baby Christians. It's for those who have grown. So this I will follow them that believe. Oh, we've read it. And some of us still don't have a deliverance ministry. When you grow, confidence will come. I am not the one asking you to get out of here. Dima is the one who sent me. One who receives me, receives you, receives me. Who receives me, receives the one who sent me. That's what Jesus Christ said. In Acts chapter 9, from verse 32 to 35, Acts 9, 32 to 35. In yes, Jesus Christ made thee whole. That's what Peter said. I'm not the one making you whole. In yes, it is the one backing me up. I'm his ambassador. So in yes, I command you, get up. Make your bed. And he got up and made his bed. As you grow higher in the Lord, you become confident that you have authority. And that authority it's because you are an ambassador of Christ. I've given the illustration before. Power is one thing. Authority is another. Authority gives you 
the ability to do something that you don't even have the power to do. For example, a policeman stands on the road. He sees a trailer driver driving down the road towards him at speed. He has no power, he has no physical power to stop that trailer. But he has the authority. And all he needs to do is raise his hand, signaling to the driver, stop. And the trailer must stop. It is called authority. The driver obeyed him not because of his size, not because he has the ability to stop a trailer, but because as a policeman he has the entire nation backing him up. As you grow in the Lord, all of a sudden, you begin to know that, ah, I have someone backing me up. It's the almighty God. And in his name, I can do some mighty things. I'm praying for those of you who have been following this series, that beginning from today, you will begin to exercise your authority. You may need to start small, but you will grow. When I became born again, and I read that if you lay hands on the sick, they will recover, I wanted to practice. I wasn't sure it's going to work. And I remember those days. Anytime my, one of my children will come in from where he had been playing with the children in the, come in the surrounding, playing football, daddy, daddy, I, uh, my head is aching. I will pray that I will make sure that APC or whatever they call it in those days, I've forgotten the name of all this message now, is not too far away. In the mighty name of Jesus, I command you to be well. And then I will put the head of the child on my lap, waiting to see what's going to happen. But the Almighty God will always meet you at the level of your faith. Not once in all those days did I have to use the medicine. Not once. Because within five minutes, it's either the child is saying, ah, I can go and play now. Or the child is fully asleep. Then I move from Try out on my children to try out on my friends. Those that I know who are close enough that if I fail, they, they won't go and ridicule me. And my friends were coming one by one and I will pray for them. But as I did and as I got results, my confidence in the Almighty who said lay hands on the sick and they will recover grew. So that today I can pray for anyone, anywhere, trusting the Almighty God. I'm saying this to encourage someone in particular. Because when you say you are growing higher, you are not growing higher for yourself. You are going higher for others to benefit from you. 
Don't forget Matthew chapter 18 verse 18. Matthew chapter 18 verse 18 says clearly that whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth will be losing in heaven. Use that authority. Because we will see in the text we read today something very interesting happened. The king obeyed when Elijah commanded him. <laughs> that, to me, is very exciting. The king did not even question him and say, who are you to be commanding me? Remember, the king had been looking for him to kill him. Now, the fugitive is commanding the one who had been looking for him, and the king obeyed. I want to encourage someone today. Darkness has no choice. It must obey light. When the Almighty God said in Genesis chapter 1, you can read it from verse 1 to 3. Genesis 1 from verse 1 to 3. When darkness covered the face of the earth, when God said, let there be light, immediately there was light. And in the name that's above every other name, I am also commanding every darkness in your life must give way to light today. Exercise your authority. In Luke chapter 10, verse 17, Luke 10, verse 17, the Bible said the 70 returned again. The 70 ambassadors returned to the Lord Jesus Christ and said, even demons were subject to us in your name. Just make sure that when you are exercising this authority, you do it in the name of Jesus. Philippians chapter 2 verse 10. Philippians 2 verse 10. At the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. I'm appealing to you, my beloved. You have reached a stage in your spiritual growth now that you stop playing church. If you have been listening to all this series up to this moment, by now you should be exercising authority. The word of God made it clear. Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 19 to 23 Ephesians 1, 19 to 23, that all the forces of darkness are under your feet. That is the truth. Behave as if you believe the truth. Let me close with this. Acts chapter 19. From verse 11 to 17. Acts 19, 11 to 17. Tells you one thing. God can perform special miracles by the hand of someone who used to be a chief of sinners. If he can do it for Paul, he can do it for you. But that's not all. It also tells you that the devil knows who you are, even if you don't know. Because when some fake people try to use the name of Jesus, the devil said, Jesus, I know. Paul also, I know. 
if you have been following this series up to this stage, the devil knows who you are. He knows who is dwelling in you. He's only waiting for you to begin to exercise your authority. You cannot exercise this authority if Christ is not dwelling in you. But if he's dwelling in you, from now on, you begin to command all those forces of darkness. And they will obey you. But if you are not a child of God, you can become one today by inviting Jesus Christ into your life. So I'm going to give you an opportunity to do so right away. So wherever you are, if you will bow your head and cry to God and ask him to take over your life, he will do so. So bow your head now and cry to the Lord and ask him to help you save your soul. And he will answer you today. Thank you, Father. Almighty God, we are thanking you for your word. We are asking that all those who are calling on you now for salvation, you will save their souls. You will come into their lives and become their king, become their Lord. Let your blood wash away their sins. And each time they call on you, answer them by fire. As for all your children, who by now are matured children of God, ambassadors of Christ, today as they go out with confidence to command forces of darkness, let them have instant results. So that from now on we begin to hear mighty testimonies to the glory of your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. For well, those of you who have given your life to Jesus, congratulations. Um, please contact me as soon as possible. And I promise you I'll be praying for you. And the rest of us, let's begin to exercise our authority so that I'll be hearing more testimonies from you. God bless you.